Hi, I'm Ken Crawford, president of the Alaska Conference, and I want to show you around my Alaska. I love it here. This is not the end of the world, but it's pretty close. I love Alaska. It's the greatest adventure you could ever imagine. If you want to find out more, go to our website, alaskaconference.org, and you'll find all kinds of information and stories on what Alaska is like. And I'd like to invite you to our Alaska Men's Retreat, the third weekend in July. It's about 25 miles back into the Caribou Watershed and by four-wheeler. And you can see some of the, the four-wheelers, the men that are coming in. There'll probably be about 100 men there this weekend. Our speaker is Dick Dirksen. Every time I come to Alaska, I fall in love again and never want to leave. And then I have to leave and I go work other places. And then I get back to Alaska and there's just a relaxation that hits me. By the way, I want to introduce you to my fellow travelers. I have Quentin Purvis. Quentin is vice president in Alaska, and my son, David Crawford, he is a professor at Walla Walla University, and we're traveling together in this path. This is gonna get exciting. It's such an adventure getting in here. Uh, you're pretty much guaranteed to at least get wet once um, if you're on a four-wheeler. And if you're walking, you're definitely gonna get wet. You always look on the lookout for animals. We haven't seen a bear yet, but we're looking forward to seeing one of them, hopefully. And we're packing iron so we can scare them off, or uh, hopefully scare them off. Once we get about another five miles in here, the road gets really challenging, and we're going to have some fun. way into this camp is 21 miles. Woohoohoo! Praise the Lord we're here. <laughs> this is Alaska Men's Retreat. Here we are, my favorite weekend of the year. Well, if you come out here to stay clean, it's not going to happen. There's more mud holes here than there are roads in, in Anchorage. It's like that. Out in the middle of nowhere, except uh, for a few guys that drive their rigs in and get them drowned on the way in. The airstrip over here was in terrible condition. I flew in on a Thursday and I brought my brush whacker and I spent all day long widening the airstrip. In the cabin, you see the, the three windows there. I came up here one day and, and uh, the windows were all knocked out. And I got in the cabin and a bear had been in there and just thrashed the place. And so I, I left, a, I put a can of starting fluid in there with a piece of cheese on it. And uh, came back, next time I came back, the other window was out. I think he took it out when he was on his way out of there because he bit that, <laughs> bit that can of starting fluid and, and it had a hole in it about the size of a 22 sh shot would make, you know. I've got three claims here, three 40 acre claims. So uh, it goes on down past the air, end of the strip about oh, almost a quarter mile. And uh, yeah, you want to make a turn there before you run in the mountain if you can. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a very enjoyable place and uh, you have to go see what they have over there they have that a cable up on the mountain about just about 40 feet away and, and then they let this thing go and this plate's coming at you and you have to hit it before it gets to you if you don't hit it then you got eaten by the grizzly bear see welcome to alaska my name is alaska joe i live in palmer and sometimes we get out where there aren't any roads or um, highways or signal lights. This is Alaska Men's Retreat. We're on Caribou Creek and a bunch of guys are having a great time here doing uh, outdoor things. And one of the uh, things that we've tried to set up as a little bit of fun is what I call the charging bear target. And uh, for those of you who don't know, there are big things in Alaska that actually can chew on you. Right now, one of our... Uh, Participants has gone out to uh, do a little fly. 
flying. So we're having that happen while uh, we're telling you what's going on. Sixty miles that way, outward bound group was chewed on by grizzly bears. So even though that's not a frequent occurrence, it certainly is a risk. And so we carry bear protection while we're here. Some of that is uh, spray and some of it is spraying lead, but it's gotta be where you want it to be. And so I set up the charging bear target. This is pulled up the hill. And when you step off the wire, it comes after you four and a half seconds and you have the opportunity to uh, practice your skills or realize that maybe you shouldn't be shooting, you should be spraying with pepper spray. But uh, that gives us a little bit of uh, opportunity to do this. The fee for doing this is $5. Each time you shoot five bullets, $5, and all that goes to uh, Alaska Evangelism. I set this up and I donate the time, and if you don't have bullets, I'll help you with that too. So we come over here and I'm gonna pull the rope and the pulley takes it up the hill. And we got uh, enough brush in the way. I got to lay the rope out just right. And then I'm going to stand on it. But I can't shoot unless I'm in the box. So when I step off the cable, the bear's coming after me. He's coming down the hill and he's going to be here in four and a half seconds. So just imagine the excitement. You're walking through the bushes and all of a sudden there's a bear. Your adrenaline flows. These guys are fast. They can hit 30 miles an hour in half a second. Now, it's not likely they're going to be on you. They're most likely going to say, who's that guy invading my space? I'm out of here. And they're going to run the other way. But in the event that they don't, if you're not prepared, then you need to roll up in a little ball and wait till they chew on you. And then hopefully they don't hurt you too bad. But we're going to try to shoot here. So if I can get you guys to clear so we can have a, an open range. I'm gonna put on my hearing protectors, which you might not do in the real circumstance. And then you need to shoot a big gun with big bullets if you wanna stop a bear. So 44 is kind of the floor. There are some bigger ones, but they're a little harder to shoot. So five rounds and I'm gonna take a deep breath and then uh, I'll step off the rope. Well, sometimes the rope breaks. Fortunately, exciting, we'll look at the paper plate and see uh, what happened. <laughs> My holes are in the target. Okay, theoretically the rope will stop this when it gets right to you, but uh, sometimes the bear doesn't stop, so you just better be ready. <laughs> Blake hit him in the face. <laughs> that was really fun. <laughs> Well, welcome to my campsite at Men's Retreat. This is how we cook. We've got uh, scrambled eggs, we've got fried potatoes, we've got morning sausages, ve uh, vegetarian sausages. Join us, look at those eggs. And they are ready. Take a look at our little improvised uh, kitchen stove that we cook on over here. It, uh, some old pieces that we found laying around works great. This is old pieces from the gold mine dredge or whatever they had here. Yeah, a couple of campsites down, guys are making their own waffles. And the ones that uh, I saw walking by here, but somebody looked pretty good. You guys, while you're doing the dishes, I wanna tell you a story. We stack up all this wood that we're sitting on at the end of the camp, we take it up and stack it up there by the, by the campfire, by the cabin. And so we had probably a quart of wood stacked up there or more. And through the winter, it's usually there for the next year when we're ready to use it. Well, Kent came back early last year and the wood was all gone. And he was not happy. But come to find out that there's an old guy that lives down the, Caribou Creek here, about two or three miles, an old trapper, a gold miner. And he was in his cabin and he got sick during the winter. 
And so he, he got so sick that he ran out of wood. And he was afraid he was going to freeze to death. And he remembered this pile of wood. So he, he made it up here to the cabin. And he spent the rest of the winter here in Kent's cabin and burned all the wood up. And so he came up when Kent arrived here. And he said, I want you to know that uh, you guys saved my life. If it hadn't have been for that pile of wood you had there, then I probably would have died. So I just wanted to say thank you. So I guess men's <laughs> retreat saves lives in more ways than one. <laughs> I'm going to the Friday evening program, and I'm from Wasilla. And I'm from Palmer. <laughs> and I'm going. And I'm Dad, so that <laughs> makes me from Palmer as well. Yep. <laughs> I'm from California. Welcome back to Men's Retreat. Good to have you all here again. Good beer. Why don't we start our uh, singing tonight with uh, There's Power in the Blood. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. There's nothing more that I like than coming out here and uh, fellowshipping with you guys. It's so good to sit down and talk and just be able to uh, interact about all the stuff that you're dealing with with somebody else that more than likely is dealing with the same thing. And uh, just glad to be here. Danny? Well, welcome to our eighth annual Alaska Conference Wilderness Men's Retreat. Amen. We started in 2005. This year, Dick Dirksen. Lord, we're just guys. We're your guys. Make us an army to represent you, to represent you every day, everywhere in your strength. Thanks for the privilege. Amen. We're on the trail to go look for some fossils. We got to get up here on the plateau and get past the gorge just over there to the west because it's kind of steep and hard but this trail that we're on right here, this game trail, will take us up to the top and hopefully we'll go find some fossils like some chambered nautilus, um, lots of other kinds. I don't even know what they are. Leaves, trees. This trail right here is made by moose and caribou and bears. And uh, they did a nice job making a trail for us to go up. Maybe some moose droppings up here. We call them moose pearls because I used to get paid $5 per five gallon bucket for collecting these moose pearls. We collected moose pearls. Um, my mom and her friend, they'd make some moose mooses, some mosquitoes, ice worms, and some other kind of jewelry. <laughs> they, they made some jewelry out of these. They sold them as novelty gifts at the gift shops. Kind of funny. And I got some in the trail right here. My connection with this land goes back a few years. In 1976, I actually was a welder on this gold mine for a summer. This gold mine is a blessing to other people that can come up here and enjoy it. And uh, that's what it's all about. Here's a kind of a lookout from up above to the camp. Gold mine goes up to the right up here down to the end of the runway about. And it's a quarter mile wide. There is fossils on both sides of the creek. I found uh, the chambered nautilus shells, the ammonites on this side, but I found some big ones over here. So this gorge right here is what we're trying to get past. And that's why we hiked up the hill. We're trying to get over that direction so that 
we can get to the fossil beds and we'll drop down into uh, the upper valley here uh, above the gold claim here. And uh, there's just a lot, lots more gravel bed up, up there that we can access. About three, four years ago, we found one that was about 18 inches in diameter. And dad came up with a four-wheeler to, to get it. And when he was on his way in to get it, he saw it on another four-wheeler going the other direction. No. <laughs> so he missed out on that one. But we'll find some pieces of some bigger ones down here that, than that. Maybe we'll find a whole one. I hope so. That'd be fun. Anyway, we can just follow this game trail here, and that'll take us right to where we go down. Usually up here, you can find a lot of blueberries and different kind of moss berries, cran wild cranberries. It's been a pretty cold year, so there's not a whole lot at this point yet. Well, this tundra, it's, it's really nice and soft, and right here it's pretty firm, but the farther you get out here, it's soft. This moss, yeah, there you go for some moose pearls, some pretty good ones. Tundra is nice and soft. Underneath, it's probably pretty wet because there's permafrost where there's tundra usually. You can go across it a few times. If you, if it, if you start taking vehicles across it, it mushes up pretty fast and then becomes impassable in that spot. This looks like, is it a good spot? Can you can see down there. Just don't be afraid to grab onto something. Keep your feet under you. <laughs> This is real hiking. I just, I, I like the, to get out and go places. These trees are dead because of the spruce beetle. Their spruce beetle kill. And I tell you what, they're all over the state. It's amazing that a little teeny bug can take a tree down like this. They just start eating away on it and with their buddies and pretty soon they can just cut off the lifeline. You can't let anything, even though as little as a bug, start on a tree like that. It's what one little sin can do. It'll just take you down if it's unchecked. Well, we have dropped back down into Caribou Creek. See that um, ridge right up ahead of us? That is where the main fossils, that's where the snails come from. The crazy thing that they would be up here in the mountains and uh, a long, long ways from the water and they're up here. It's it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's actually a miracle that this stuff is up here to give us evidence of the the flood. The rocks out here are feasts to look at. There's so many different colors, shapes, and different kinds. I mean, you can find agate. I mean, look at. I mean, what makes a rock like that? What makes a rock like that. It's just crazy stuff. That's mostly what you find out here is agate, jasper, and fossils. And so, hey, you just keep looking. You find it when you, when you find it. It'll be... A rock hound doesn't walk too fast and they don't walk in a straight line. <laughs> Most of the rocks are leverites. <laughs> you leave them right there. See what this is here? This is another coil from this. This is, a, you, know, you, you know those snails, that are, those ammonites that are coiled up like this, in a coil? Here's another piece. There's the inside of them. And then here's the next, next part of the animal as it, as it goes on its spiral. And so these things are just hooked together. Now these are huge. If this shell was to be in its full size, it would be huge. Now see this, there's the inside of another one. Here's, here's another one that's going inside here, swirling into that piece. And there's part of it there. Think how big that is. I mean, that, that's a big snail. You look up there and there's a lot of those rocks up there that are these things. Work we're trying to find some fossils. Specifically Nautilus. Watch out. It's good to be out here away from all the distractions and unwind, at least try to. It's a lot of work looking for Nautilus though. 
but kind of worth it. Here I am, <laughs> Alaska Men's Retreat. But the, these rocks here, I mean, that looks like that looks like the bottom of an ocean to me. That's yeah. that's gotten hard. Fractures. Yeah, nice agate. There's lots of agate up here. It's it's fun to find. That's a good one. Is it? Yeah, that's a nice piece of agate. I don't know what, if this is an agate, but it's sort of yeah, it's agate ish. A, you can see the you can see the shell though. It was it was a it was like a little clamor. What yeah. petrified them? I mean, why didn't they rot like anything else? You got good questions. Well, they were buried. There was no oh man, you got a good one. And inside each one, there's like a little uh, something. Something. They, they're like an egg or something because they're scattered all over. I picked up like a dozen of them up here. Uh -huh. But uh, there's a little nucleus inside each one. It's a little crystal-like. It's really interesting. Baby you really know to know what it is. They're little <laughs> eggs. You know, Pastor, the um, on Mount St. Helens, they're already make their. They're having fossils made already from Mount St. Helens. Really? Yeah, they're finding fossils up there now from the St. Helens. And the way the trees are in the lake and stuff, yeah. and going into the dirt. Petrifying, you say? Well, they're, they're, they're having petrification, you know, where, where rock, the mud's turning into rock. Can I hand this off to somebody? Yeah. You want to just kind of slide it down? Here it comes. They just kind of get a hold of it and slide it down. Yeah. No. I mean, look at that. Look at those chambers right there. Is it? That's it. Yeah, hang on. There, hand me the, the tool if you'd like. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh. Okay, go ahead. Got it. There you go. Okay, you can see the chambers, but not, not a great specimen. But... There's the chambers right there. Good morning. Right. Welcome to the Caribou Creek Hilton. Come on in and stay a while. Just don't eat anything. I yeah, don't eat anything. Oh, eat it. It's good. <laughs> Actually, we need to eat this food up, or we're gonna we have to fly it all out or backpack it all out. So, <laughs> protection, protection, food. Have some nuts. <laughs> and here in a short while, we're going to take down all the the tarp off of the shelter and put everything away so that it doesn't collapse from snow this next winter because we probably won't be back here till next spring. So you we're just in. Ask me twice. I'll help you eat. Yeah, help us. Help me eat, please. <laughs> anyway, we're having a great time. Dick is eating uh, half a loaf of uh, bread right now. We'll all be well smoked and cured before we leave to today. <laughs> we had a nice rain last night. And uh, this morning I woke up because there was a little, a small bird between my tent fly and my tent and was fluttering above my head, and that woke me up at six o'clock this morning. So. I guess that was my wake-up call. Sabbath afternoon, uh, we climbed up to the top of this cliff over here. There's a golden eagle nest at the top of the cliff. And so we did a, a stalk and got to a location where we could film. The eagle was, had his back turned <laughs> and would turn his head every once in a while and give a coy little look. You know, up on top there, it's, the tundra has so many uh, boggy holes mm -hmm. that it, it's got to be a one-legged tundra. <laughs> I kept figuring, I'm going to put a leg down in here and break it clear off. <laughs> you expend twice as much energy to walk on tundra, or maybe more, maybe more than yeah. you would walking on a gravel like we're walking on here. Okay, but the, the tundra, I suppose a green shag carpet would be a fair valuation, yeah. but you've got to make the carpet three feet deep. That's right, right. And it's got to have water. You've got to, you've got to have water. Around. You've got to have some really soft places that really have no bottom, so when you step in those, you're Every it goes all the way yeah, down. It just kind of goes forever. Yeah. Just, and then every time you start to take a step, you suddenly <laughs> realize there are a whole bunch of very fresh <laughs> moose droppings right here. <laughs> just when you think you've got it figured out and the trail is pretty good, that's when you have a surprise ahead of you yeah, waiting. Right. Yeah. The, then the bear says, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Welcome to Alaska. More than once, I've been walking through that tundra and run into a cow with calf. <laughs> There's nothing you can do except get a big tree between you and the moose. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of respect for moose because a mad moose is just as dangerous as a as a as an angry grizzly bear. Really? You know, 
Oh, absolutely. So why do you have the gun with you then, hit on, on your hip, when the moose decides to fall in love with you? Well, I, I don't want to hurt the moose, so generally I have a partner along, and I shoot my partner in the knee, and then I run, and so, <laughs> so <laughs> that also, that technique also works with bears. <laughs> We have an agreement with the wildlife here. Bring us a sacrifice once in a while, we'll leave you alone. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hold it, hold it. He's doing right, he's doing good. Yeah. Whoa, 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 stop. Your front wheel is pushed down so hard on this, it's bending your axle. Gotta turn it forward. There you go. He's practically out, folks. Well, we're having a little bit of mechanical problems. Nothing that we can't fix with a little ingenuity. Mechanical solutions. Too. We've got solutions. If we've got a problem, we can think up a solution. Quentin's uh, pull cord went and his battery went his dead. Lights are all on, though. So what we're gonna do? is we're going to take uh, my battery and we're going to put it in his rig and see if we can get his rig going. Because I can always pull start mine. And we'll just see if that'll work and get us home. So we'll just see how this works. When you live where you got no other choice, you figure out how to make it work. And there's no more beautiful place to have a breakdown than on the top of a mountain in this beautiful range. Well, such is the fun of four-wheeling. It's always some little challenge. We're in the middle of the Talkeetna Range on the Alfred Creek watershed. In the distance, you can see the trail that we just came across. So, why not come up and join us? Why not uh, take a, a weekend or a week and come up and have this kind of adventure? This is really what it's all about. I've seen more um, miracles happen on trips like this. I've seen guys' lives changed. I've seen marriages restored. It's been a wonderful time together. Quentin is uh, coasting down the hill and we've had wonderful fellowship with each other. We've had spiritual food, beautiful wilderness, wildlife, a great adventure. Most of the men are just heading down the path there and putting their machines on their trailers and heading home and they've been blessed spiritually. We finally arrived at the end of another adventuresome, beautiful weekend. So what did you think of our Alaska men's retreat? Next year, come on up and join us. Book a slot and uh, come on up and try it. For my Alaska, this has been Ken Crawford. Thanks so much for coming with me. If you enjoyed watching this series, if you're interested in what you've seen or what we're doing in Alaska, Go to the Alaska website, alaskaconference.org, and there you'll find additional information.